it's a time for Package from China. Welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video we are going to take a close look at the retro game HD. Better said, this is a Sega Genesis or Mega Drive here in Europe with an HDMI connection included. I already did a video about a version but this is the latest edition from our friends from China and I was just curious how good is the signal and what can we do with it. So we're going to play some games, we're going to test out and we're going to have some fun because it's Sega! from China okay so let's open up the package itself because I'm also curious how everything is packed up all right I must say I really like the box itself it looks very nice so if you're a box collector I think you will appreciate this it's a little bit bust up due of transport yeah but that happens of course Okay, so inside the package we're finding the system itself. We're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the original version. Not only with the form factor, but also what you're going to get. Hey, ooh, I love this pink. It's something new. <laughs> this is nothing like the original one. Reset. The volume control seems to be working. But okay, let's take a closer look at this later. Alright, so here we're going to get the toilet paper manual. This is not even manual, it's just a piece of paper that says what's included and what can you do with it. Yep, yeah, alright. Alright, so let's take a close look at this because it's very interesting. With my previous model, I didn't get all of the controllers, I just got the wireless six buttons. But in this version, we're going to get the old school, but it isn't six button, but more like the old school form factor. I'm personally a big fan of the really old school bulky version. Ah, but first, the smell test. Hmm, doesn't smell chemical at all. So, what you, as you can see over here, we're having a screw hole. And the reason why we're going to get this joystick with it, it's more like this tiny... Ah, here it is. Oh, I was looking at the wrong. So we're going to get this tiny joystick. More like this, I, uh, the same mini arcade edition. And it looks kind of weird in my opinion, but how is it going to play? I don't know, man. I don't know, it looks really weird. <laughs> Another thing is that we're having A, B, C, and not X. <laughs> Why no, we just read bit twice A, B, C. <laughs> oh, that's kind of weird. And we're having a switch here at the back. So kind of strange, it feels quite nice. The cable is quite long, but yeah, we're going to check it out how good it is. So everything is included, a power supply, an AV out cable, because yep, it can place AV out. We're going to get an HDMI cable, even a converter for the adapter. And here we're having the cheap, the cheap, 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 cheap knockoff controllers. And oh man, oh man, these things feel really bad. The D-pad is nothing like the original one. I must say, I've, this is not, let's say, the most horrible controller I have seen. The battery compartment, it's old school way of connecting it. Oh boy, select start. And these feel decent enough to play with. So player 2 says indicate over here. And this is player 1. And of course the last one is the multi-card. Yes, because it includes a multi-card. This is the 18 in 1. Nah, free goodies. Who doesn't like that? Okay, so when you're looking at them side by side. You can see the casing looks very similar in many ways. Okay, there are some minor differences. Like we're having the pink letters over here. 16 bit. In, yeah. And a way better and bigger font. I really like this, but this looks pretty awesome in my opinion. There is no decal of the official Sega. The old school 90s button switch and the cheap China version. <laughs> oh. But if you're thinking, hey, let's get myself an HDMI version and connect it with my Sega CD, nope. They have the cover, but we don't have the connector. But let's take a close look at the back. Here we have the switch where we can switch between the regions. I think it's pretty cool that it has it. HDMI connection, the AV out and the power in. And that's it. Okay, so let's try an original game. Let's see how it fits. Okay, so it clicks in very well. But it doesn't come out that easily. Let's try it again. No, the pins are not like the original system. 
All right, so let's open it up and let's see what we're going to get inside because I'm very curious how big is the PCB inside because I think I we're going to cry if we ever see the PCB inside. Ooh, breaking the seal. Ah, there goes my warranty. Ooh. All right, guys, so this is what you're going to get inside. Oh man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> Oh, how easy can it be? How basic can it be? It's so when you're looking at the cover over here, it's like somebody is talking to you. But at the springs, everything is made very cheaply. Look at how they make the LED work. Look at this. They just solder it straight on the LED. There's nothing holding it in place. Yeah, okay, the, the hot glue holding the LEDs, but if you move it around, it will come off. Oh boy, let's take a close look at the main boards. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of the internals of the device. As you can see, there's not a lot of stuff because back in the 90s, we have these big gigantic PCBs inside, but now we are having, having a couple of them inside. Okay, so here we're having the PCB inside of the cartridge slot. As you can see over here, the cartridge slot is even slightly bigger than the PCB that's beneath it. Pretty funny to see this. So it's a fact that I go hot glue crazy with these things. As you can see, there's the ribbon cable that goes to the cartridge slot over here. It also contains an extra PCB and so far I can see this is for the wireless connection for the two controllers that are just straight soldered on this PCB. So in the right top corner, we're going to get the slider and as you can see, there is actual a slider inside. So I'm guessing this will work. The audio jack out and here we're having the on and switch and the very cheap <laughs> switch that is the reset switch and last but not least we're having here the region switch and the pcb this is connected yeah straight on the pcb here at the right that is for the output and also the input because here we're having the hdmi connector and here we're having the av out and then we're having here the yes input for the adapter okay guys so we're going to do a comparison with the sega hdmi from china with my original Sonic and & Knuckles and Sonic 3 cartridge. Okay, so with the original Mega Drive or Genesis, we are going to try this with a very cheap basic upscaler, just to give it more like a good and honest competition. And just to see, I'm also going to include this with a full RGB cable and of course the same game. We're going to listen and we're going to see how good is the quality between the systems. guys so the sonic 3 and knuckles cartridge my favorite game for the sega mega drive is working like a charm yeah not even talking about the audio quality but i do like it that it works because a lot of clones have problems with the dual cartridge but sadly with my mega ever drive from my friends from china it doesn't work so let's grab ourselves a different ever drive let's see that we're having a better result then yep and with the grid ever drive we're going to get the same result Okay, so let's try a different multi-card now. The original that came with it, the 801, also works. But I just wanted to see if another multi-card also works with the Chinese HDMI Sega. Just want to check out a different region of the game, Turtles Tournament Fighter. And of course, the original game, so this will work like a charm. 
All right, so the 16-bit controller, I must say this thing is really cool. I like it. I played quite some time with it and this is one that goes in my personal collection. The tiny version of the wireless, don't even start about it. So when it comes to the support, it's cool that it supports the dual cartridge. There's only you know, one game that supports it. But when you're looking at some Everdrives having a problem, the audio itself is pretty choppy. I don't like it because the Sega Mega Drive, the audio that makes what the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis is just so cool, in my opinion. So yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. The audio or the audio itself was horrible, but the signal itself from the system itself, the HDMI, I think was not that bad. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and I will see you in the next video.